mention the work that we're doing to try to create a disability flag within our system. Uh, coupled with that uh, is a new effort that is included in the governor's budget proposal to adopt a Medicaid state plan amendment that will cover housing-based case management services as a Medicaid um, finance office. Medicaid, as you know, is an insurance program. It pays for people to go to the emergency room. It covers people who come to this um, health center for health care services. Uh, it doesn't cover case management um, traditionally, right? But it can. Um, and the federal rules have always said states can adopt this as an optional benefit. Now, it's taken us a few years, but we finally convinced our state policymakers to agree that um, housing solves homelessness. Uh, and housing is health care. Uh, and so they've decided to include in the governor's budget a proposal to adopt uh, a new state of plan amendment. In layman's terms, is Medicaid being an entitlement program, meaning if you are poor, uh, um, after the Affordable Care Act, if you are poor or disabled, uh, uh, you are entitled uh, to get Medicaid, uh, at least in the state of Connecticut. Uh, what it also will mean is if you are homeless and you uh, are, are vulnerable enough, meaning you've used uh, enough uh, hospitalizations and emergency room visits, you will soon qualify for a housing uh, case management benefit. In other words, uh, we are close to the day where supportive housing will be provided as an entitlement to people with disabilities. In other words, uh, the idea of housing as a human right, uh, we are actually close to operational. Let me talk about three, three new frontiers that we've not done a lot on and that we need to. One of them is on um, the, uh, uh, people who are, don't experience uh, sheltered homelessness but who, who sleep outside. And we know that there's a cohort of people who uh, very rarely come into shelters or, or seek, seek types of assistance. They're not the ones to call to a known for housing assistance. They're sleeping outside. They're camped out in tents. They like to hide, right? I'm sure there's folks here in Milltown. Uh, that uh, I know that in my own hometown of Hamden, um, I, I run on our, uh, you know, our, our uh, bike trail and, and I see tents hidden mid, mid deep into the woods there. Um, I know that's a problem. Luckily, we are not Los Angeles or San Francisco or Seattle or Washington, D.C., where uh, the rates of unsheltered homelessness are incredible. In fact, in Los Angeles, I heard yesterday that the number the, uh, of their homeless population, more than 60% are unsheltered. Uh, and if you look at the health profile of people who are unsheltered in Los Angeles, it is, uh, uh, it is frankly, uh, just a, a tragedy in terms of the number of chronic health conditions that people are experiencing. Not to mention rises in infectious diseases that we thought we had eradicated in this country, tuberculosis, uh, polio, things that just, uh, you know, like, uh, are, it's, a, it's a public health uh, nightmare. We don't have that problem in Connecticut, but we do have people who are sleeping outside. And the, connect, the coordinated access network system that we've created and all the progress that we've made and all the reductions that we've made in homelessness in this state really are about people who experience sheltered homelessness. Uh, we need to do a better job of figuring out how to connect with people who are sleeping outside to our systems. And that may mean um, uh, not just having a system of response where anybody calls to one, but where we need to go out and reach out to those individuals. Our instinct is often, like, let's just put more outreach workers on the streets. And I think that's part of it, right? We need more people to, you know, uh, more, more boots on the ground to just um, cover uh, and canvas the state. But I think what it also means is building partnerships with all the different uh, existing services that, that encounter folks. Um, I see law enforcement uh, is in, in the room today, and I think um, our law enforcement agencies um, have a key role to play. I think our, our, our fire and first responders uh, have a role to play. I think our 911 system has a role to play. I think libraries uh, have a role to play. Uh, and so I think what we need to vision to, is, is what does an outreach system look like, not just outreach workers, but an outreach system where um, we collectively as a state, um, not only our municipal and, and local services, but, but all citizens can be involved in, in, in finding uh, people experiencing homelessness outside uh, and helping them connect to services and that we make uh, it easy as possible to provide um, uh, uh, services to individuals who are experiencing unsheltered homelessness. The amount of criminal justice involvement among the population still continues to astonish me. Um, and that many people experiencing homelessness still uh, wind up in jails uh, or in, wind up uh, in prison. Um, I think often more in, in jails, uh, stuck in pretrial status, and then get released um, without necessarily conviction. Uh, and I think we need to address that intersection. So we are, we are engaging in some work to really look at um, to what extent is uh, are people experiencing homelessness involved in the criminal justice system, and by the way, uh, how many of those individuals are consuming criminal justice resources but could be diverted from criminal justice or prevented from going back to the criminal justice system if they had housing and services? And can we use some of the dollars that we spend on our prison system uh, differently um, so that we can actually provide community-based housing services? So uh, a, another thing to, to watch on uh, the frontier. A third issue is the, uh, the aging uh, cohort uh, of people experiencing homelessness. 
Um, there's been growing national research that's been looking at the fact that uh, not only is our homeless population aging, which means that uh, we're going to need to attend to uh, different kinds of service needs uh, and additional health challenges, but that there's a growing number of people um, over the age of 55 who are falling into homelessness for the first time. That's a, that is, to me, is a tragedy. Uh, I, I firmly believe that uh, you measure a country's worth uh, by how it treats the, the least among it, right? The most vulnerable. And the fact that we're letting seniors um, fall into homelessness for the first time ever or fall into housing crisis is unacceptable. I think we need to really confront that as a, an, an emerging issue. Just a quick uh, overview of some of the new directions that we'll be taking, uh, as well as the work that we're continuing to do to really refine our coordinated access network system uh, and drive down our, our numbers of people experiencing homelessness and create uh, what could be the nation's first um, housing crisis resolution system, which is uh, what an end to homelessness means.